Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working on my 71 High Boy. I got a few weeks back. It's uh, time to get this thing in the shop and get it back on the road and stop dragging my feet on it. We're gonna see how cheap and how fast we can get this thing done. Uh, let's go dig into it and see what we get into. guys like i said um we're gonna be doing a little bit different build on this thing than we're usually doing on the channel uh just gonna do a quick down and dirty get this thing running get it running and driving and uh, send it down the road and uh, see if we can uh, uh make a buck off it or two so we can keep the shop going but also get another high boy back on the road so that'll be fun uh we're not gonna get i'm gonna try not to get very deep into this thing and not get carried away because when i get carried away uh, things really start to snowball and uh, the uh, cost of uh, getting one completed goes up and also the time goes way up and uh, for one I don't want to spend a bunch of money on this thing because I'm saving up for uh, my ultimate crew cab but for two I want to work on my ultimate crew cab and if I start snowballing this thing I won't have time to do that so we're going to try to keep all that stuff at a moderate level and just uh, like I said just get it running and driving. We don't have to get it perfect. We don't even have to get it great. We just got to get it good enough to be on the road and running and driving. So the biggest issue we have with that is we don't have an engine. Now I'm going to be showing you guys the engine I'm planning on running here in a little bit. Uh, we got uh, a few options in the other shop. Not many that are very good, but I have one that's probably decent enough. And uh, I think first step is going to be we're going to be doing inventory on all the stuff that's inside the cab. I already have pretty much the bed kind of cleaned out and uh, there was a mixture of several different trucks in the bed. Uh, I think I have all the parts that go with this truck uh, sorted out and uh, all the stuff we don't need uh, sorted out on my other truck over there to haul off. So uh, there's lots of stuff in here, lots of cleaning. This thing hasn't been cleaned in a long time. The whole frame is all greasy and grimy. I'm not sure if we're going to be pulling the cab. Uh, it's kind of one of those things. Uh, it would make life easier and I could clean it a lot better, but then, you know, it takes a lot of time and then you're doing stuff like, well, while it's up, I might as well do this and I might as well do that and I might as well do that. And then we're getting back into the snowballing deal. So, uh, like I said, first step is going to be going through all the parts and then we're going to get this thing cleaned and then we'll get it in the shop and uh, really start digging into what we need to get done. Okay. So our parts is, uh, we have a lot of parts in here. I don't know if we're going to use them all. Uh, we have stuff like uh, new window felts and uh, seals, and we have this new flywheel and a new clutch and uh, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not sure we're going to be using all of it. Uh, we'll probably be using some of it. But uh, like uh, they started to pull this door part to replace the seals, and these window felts aren't that bad. So I might just leave them just in, uh, to save time and use those uh, new ones on another project. And, uh, but we, they did take out the, uh, the felts here, the, the window scrapers or whatever you call these. And, um, you know, these are some really nice ones, uh, some, some, some precisions and my uh, ranch truck over there needs some window seals. So I might be saving these for that truck. And I found some of these in the back that, uh, look like they're new. They just kind of got rained on. We might see if we could utilize those in this door here just to get something back in it. We do have the wing window in here somewhere. Uh, I know I saw it in here somewhere. So we do have the wing window and uh, they didn't start taking that apart. They did yank the uh, door, the trim plates off and uh, some of the gasket, the, the uh, door seals are kind of chewed up. I'm not sure if I'm gonna replace those. I do like the originals to keep them whenever I can because the door shuts so nice, but these are pretty well uh, wasted. So we might be replacing on those. And just uh, general stuff like this is a 67 door handle and a 67 window crank. I don't even know why they're in here, but uh, I guess we have them. Like it won't even, uh, well, the, I guess the window crank will work, but the door handle won't even work on this. So I have to dig in here to see if I can find all that stuff that was taken off of here. I'm sure it's just in here. Um, but uh, yeah, sort of the other parts we have, there's the wing window. You know, stuff like shocks, uh, there's a new alternator, stuff like that I think we'll be utilizing. Uh, and brakes, they have stuff to do the brakes, but the brakes work on this. Whenever we loaded this thing, it has good brakes, so we might be uh, just making sure they're all good and uh, topped off. But uh, 
yeah, uh, there's lots of, um, like I said, there's lots of stuff in here we may not be using uh, just because uh, it takes extra time to replace all that stuff. And if we, we don't need it, you know, why, why spend the time to replace it and I'll save it on something we're making a little bit nicer. I don't really want to like neglect this thing to the point of just throwing junk at it just to get it like i don't want to do that but i also don't want to throw good parts at it they're kind of a waste on this truck you know what i'm saying so it's you know it's going to be a struggle because i'm trying to do this thing on a little bit of a budget so uh it's not going to be that great of a truck when we get done with it i mean it's going to be a decent truck but it's not going to be a nice truck so you know the more money i throw at it i'm probably not going to get back on the back end because it's not going to be worth you know a ton when I get done with it. So it's going to be kind of an affordable, you know, driver high boys, basically what I'm kind of shooting for. Uh, here you can see the bed. I have most of it pretty much cleaned out. This thing was pack loaded with a whole bunch of stuff. I took, I took uh, two boxes of trash out of this thing. Uh, Cause there's just, just trash and junk and parts of bicycles and stuff in here that like I'm never going to use. So I just pitched them. Uh, but there was quite a bit of stuff that was, uh, we'll go show you that stuff here in a second. But I think this stuff is kind of more of the stuff we'll be using. There's the air cleaner, the headlight uh, bezels. Uh, those go on this truck. And there's a whole bunch of 71 uh, grill bars right there. We only need two. But uh, I just left them in here so I can pick the best ones to use on this. Uh, engine fan, I'm not sure if we'll be using that one or the one that's on the engine. Uh, and then the hood hinges that are over there. Where's my finger? They're over there. Uh, this thing doesn't currently have hood hinges so that kind of stuff and here's a box of uh, truck parts i didn't go all the way through it but i'm guessing it's part of stuff for this truck so i just left it in here and then like i said here's those window felts i found in here so we'll see if those will work uh, over here all the parts that uh, we took out oh i mentioned the, the radiator i found back there i think that one goes in this truck so we're going to be using that one but uh, there's also this one in there so we have two to choose from if one of them starts leaking or something but um like the the in intake that's just a truck intake two barrel two ac compressors this truck doesn't have ac so we don't need that uh power steering pump we don't need that because this truck doesn't have power steering because it's a high boy and then an old clutch uh some exhaust manifolds i'm just gonna go put this in the uh, parts shed where all my old parts are and uh down the road if we ever need some of that stuff for another vehicle another project i'll be able to yank that out so um since I got the bed cleaned out, I'm going to get going on all this stuff and kind of try to get a game plan on what I'm using and what I'm not. So I just have an idea of the stuff I'm going to need. And, uh, you know, if I spot something, I can I can snag it up. So I'm going to get after that and uh, see what we get done. All right. So I'm just going to start going through this stuff and uh, seeing what I got. This is the original 71 uh, grill insert that is uh, out of the front. It's unfortunately broken. Now, it looks like they did get some new uh, 72 inserts because he can't get the 71s. Um, so I'll have to see. I don't know if you can somehow. It doesn't look like it. You can mount the 71 insert on the 72 grill. I don't know. I'll have to play with that and see what I come up with because uh, this one is broken. I guess you could put it back on there and... Uh, well, even the clips are broken, so I don't know. We'll have to see what I come up with there, but we'll, we'll put both of this stuff in the keep box. Put this on top so it doesn't get broken. Um, what we got here? Window felts. So either that is the rest of the kit. It's on that side or we have two sets, which would not be unheard of because I've gotten trucks before that have two of everything. Windshield, back window gasket. That one's not that bad. So I think we're gonna put this in the uh, spare parts pile that we uh, don't need to keep. Let's see, more window felts. I wonder if those those are probably the ones that go around the, the whole door here and those other ones are the ones that go in the divider bar. And a radio bezel. So I don't think this come, unless it came with the truck, because this one has some kind of aftermarket radio. So they might have been collecting parts and this was kind of either the spares or the uh, kind of just collected random parts pile. Let's 
It's kind of windy today. This thing's going to want to blow away. Let's see. You guys have to let me know how the audio did today. If you guys can hear me. Because it is kind of windy, but I got my microphone in my pocket. So hopefully it blocks some of the wind. Um, engine gaskets, but this is for a V6. Because we only have three holes. So this stuff definitely doesn't need to be going with this truck. So I'll have to put that in the random pile. That's probably the rest of this gasket kit. Well, no. This gasket kit is FE. Okay. So we have an FE gasket kit. And a unknown V6 gasket kit. I guess there's a part number. If I get desperate, I can look it up. Oh, right there. Ford 4 liter. Is that like the V6 that's... Uh, don't uh, like Rangers and stuff have a V6 that's something like that? That might be what this is for. But I don't have one of those, so that doesn't do me any good. We'll put that in the find a new home pile. Uh, radiator hose, do we have another one? We do. We have upper and lower radiator hoses, so we got those taken care of. We use those on this truck. Uh, fuel pump. Definitely be putting a new fuel pump on it, so we'll put that to use with this truck. Um, marker lights. I don't know if I'll use these on this truck uh, because I have a bunch of used ones, and since this truck's going to be kind of a you know driver, I'll probably save these new ones for a uh, a uh, restoration project. So I'll put that in the find a new home pile, but uh, we'll keep it on reserve in case we need it. Ah. Uh, we have a 68 to 69 steel gauge bezel, which does not fit this truck. So we'll put that in a different pile. There's our wing window for the other side. So we'll definitely be using that. Uh, some receipts. I don't think these go, yeah, big box Chevy. Yeah, these don't go with, these do not go with uh, this truck. So I'll just pitch those. Some wheel locks, I'm not gonna be using those. I hate wheel locks. Uh, new door seal plates, some scuff plates, but these are brand new in the package. Like I said, I'll probably save these. I'll probably even use these on the Ultimate Crew Cab because I need a set. And I got a bunch of uh, takeouts. I'll just put some used ones on here because it just, you know, they don't need to be brand new for this truck. So that's a good find still. Um, motor mounts. We'll definitely be using those. It's always a good idea to put new motor mounts in it. So that's, that's a keep. Uh, new shocks. I'll probably put these shocks on this truck just because that makes them drive so much nicer. So, and we got gas, Monroe gas magnum, so they're pretty good shocks. We'll put those in the keep pile for this truck. I'm getting a look at the seat for the first time. Oh, there's our other clamp for the radiator hose. Ignition components. We have, that's a voltage regulator. We'll keep that. What else we got here? This is a switch. Oh, oil pressure switch. Keep that. Horn relay. We'll keep that so we can get the horn working. What is this? Doesn't have, this is made in China on it. starter relay probably be utilizing that there's our alternator doesn't have a box because it probably took a core into it now it does it just has a single belt pulley on these high boys i'd like to use a dual belt pulley because that's what they came with we'll see what uh i think the engine we're going to use has one so we might be swapping that pulley out for a uh, dual belt pulley or if i have a good alternator that's dual drive belt so we'll put all this in the uh, keep box. A 
we got here? Water temperature sender and then some kind of fuel fitting. So I'll put that in uh, in the keep box. This stuff really adds up. So it does save a lot of money on a project like this, having that kind of stuff because uh, you know, you're thinking about, oh, that stuff's not very expensive. It costs $10 here, $15 there, you know, $20 here. But uh, when you have all of it, it really adds up to quite a bit. So, you know, several hundred dollars saved right there just by all that stuff. So that's good. Uh, and their alternator and starter, you know, this stuff used to be pretty cheap, but uh, as fewer and fewer people start using or using these kind of trucks and getting this kind of stuff, it uh, the price goes up at the parts store just because they're not making as many. So uh, last time I got a uh, alternator, it was still pretty reasonable, like $45, but a starter is uh, getting up there of $100. So uh, having a good, uh, it comes with a starter too. So a starter and alternator is a welcome sight. So there's our starter. I won't put those in the box because they're just tear the bottom out of the thing because they're so heavy. Um, or I have to go to the other side to get those parts, but these are our brake shoes. But like I said, I don't know if we're going to be doing brake jobs on this thing because the brakes already work. But uh, as I use it, the wheel cylinders might start leaking and I'll do be doing brakes on it anyway. So I'll, I'll keep them around for sure. But we'll see what we end up using and what we don't. Because uh, if I don't have to do brakes on this thing, I would be happy. Uh, same with the clutch. Uh, the, the engine I'm using, planning on using, has the transmission still attached to it. It came out of a high boy. It even has the high boy pan and everything. The only thing it's lacking is a dipstick, a high boy dipstick, but uh, there is a guy making some reproductions now, so I can at least get a new one if I need to. So uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna be putting a clutch in this thing and just save it for another project because it has a good uh, clutch and uh, flywheel assembly in that engine because I drove the truck uh, before I took the uh, the engine out. So uh, I'm hoping that the engine's good. It ran like crap, but I think it was because it was all, it was flooding out and uh, I think it has a Holly two barrel carb on it. I think the power valve or something can leak on a Holly and it makes them like flood out and just chug on fuel. So we'll see, we'll dig into that later. So I'm gonna be leaving that stuff here. I'm gonna go to the other side. There's the rest of our window felts. And down here we have a thermostat and gasket. So I think we do have multiple kits of window tracks the felts because here's two more and i've already taken no this is two set two sets is that is that right no just two total long ones so that would be the perimeter so we have two of those maybe and just two door or division bars and one wiper set i don't know I'll put it in the box and we'll see what we end up using and the thermostat we'll definitely put a thermostat in it I don't know what's in that other box over there I know one's a flywheel yeah this one's a flywheel oh yeah this is that uh, Chinese wiring harness if you can see that uh, definitely not gonna be doing a new wiring harness on this thing just because it's not needed uh, but I'll put that on the shelf and uh, maybe use it for something in the future so it uh, looks like that's the majority of our new parts. What's this up here? There's our, uh, I'll put this in the keep pile. Here's our hood emblems. The, uh, the hood that's on this thing is an F100 hood, so they don't, they're not right. But these are 250 emblems, so I'll be keeping these. And I found another window felt. So I must have two sets in here. So I'll use it in something. We might be using it in our, uh, my, old, my uh, ranch truck over there. Oh. And our 72 inserts. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using these. I guess if I can't get 71s to work, these will do the work in its place, which is probably what those guys were thinking. So put those on top so they don't get crushed. And here is our, our door card for the other side. Has some wear on it, some patina. We'll probably try to uh, brighten these up just a little bit. They're kind of uh, dull, but this will be a nice uh, blue metallic once it's cleaned up. So it'll look pretty good. So it's uh, all that stuff in there. Like I said, it really adds up to helping out a lot on this uh, truck and uh, making the uh, the 
I, I about said restoration because it's not it's not a restoration what am i saying rebuild on this truck a lot more easy to swallow because that that stuff really helps so uh uh, really glad to find all those new parts, but now since I'm getting a dent on getting all this stuff cleaned out We can really dig into uh, see what we have here So I'm gonna finish getting this stuff cleaned out get it in the shop find a home for it and we'll start cleaning Well, I spent uh, half the day yesterday and part of the day today cleaning the truck Most of the work went on underneath the truck uh, Just there was just layers and layers of grease and grime under this thing I uh, did my best to try to blast it off uh, I did not get all of it you can see how dirty the ground is here. That's just from all the grease. Um, but the frame cleaned up pretty good. Uh, transfer case is, uh, uh, you can see the metal now. The transfer case was caked on. I didn't get all of it off, but you can still see some of the uh, orange paint on it there. You can see that in one of the yokes. One of the yokes still had the orange paint on it. If you remember on my harbor, I think it was that one. You may not be able to see it from this angle. On my Harbor Blue High Boy, um, I painted the yokes on the drive shaft, the uh, red oxide orangish color. And I had a few guys ask me about that, and uh, it's because whenever I clean up these high boys like that, I take note of everything I see. And uh, that's one thing I noticed was those yokes were painted and uh, the drive shafts were not. So I paint the drive shafts black just so they don't rust. But uh, to my knowledge, the drive shafts were not painted, uh, just the yokes. And then the same thing with the transmission, there's a little bit of the orange color left, but a lot of it is... Uh, gone and i didn't get quite as good a job cleaning the transmission just because it's harder to do i am uh contemplating pulling the cab off i guess now is the time i need to make that decision if i pull the cab off i'm fixing the cab mounts so that's kind of my uh my hurdle there you know i don't know if i want to get that deep into this truck i was kind of wanting to get it done in like a week or in a week and a half but if i start doing cab mounts and that kind of stuff it tacks on a little bit a little bit more uh this one over here is the worst one if you can see that it's uh it's still holding the truck up but the bottom is uh pretty much collapsed there so that is the major hurdle um i guess the only thing saved me there is it doesn't need floor pans so uh wouldn't be too hard to just zip those cab mounts off and uh put them on so I'm still up in the air if I want to mess with that because you still have like this stuff I don't want to mess with that because there's the body damage on this truck there's a lot of body damage so I don't want to get into doing that kind of stuff because you're just you're I don't think you're really gaining much since this thing has so much body damage by fixing the rust I think it's fine just to leave it alone basically so my original plan was just to get it inside and put a motor in it but if I uh, uh, pull the cab we can clean the chassis better and put the engine and engine and transmission in as one unit and save a lot of time and effort there and fix those cab mounts so i'm going to get this thing in the shop i guess before i do that i need to show you the firewall i did clean this firewall i got in here with uh, some degreaser and a uh, drill brush and went over the firewall and it cleaned up really really nice this thing was really grimy when i started um, i might throw some the, the before pictures in here so you can see uh, how it was when i started and uh you can see now how it is now so it's quite the difference it really does help especially if you're working on trucks and stuff this is the time to get down and dirty and clean everything really well uh you know pull pull your project back out of the shop and uh, clean it up really good a steam cleaner works really good for this but you don't have necessarily have to have that it just might take a little bit more extra elbow grease to uh, get the uh, really caked on greasy stuff off but I'm going to get this thing in the shop and we'll get a game plan together. And uh, hopefully by the time I get it in there, I'll made up my mind. All right, guys. Well, I got the uh, truck in the shop. I am really amazed at how well this thing cleaned up. Really happy with it. I mean, I know it's not perfect. Uh, it's not even close to perfect. But the uh, transformation of this truck from just like a day ago to now is uh, pretty pretty nice. Uh, just, uh, just a little bit of elbow grease will really make a truck come around. So... I have it in the shop and I've been poking around on the creeper and uh, kind of trying to decide what I want to do uh, with the cab mount situation. Um, and uh, I'm still undecided, but I thought maybe you guys could help me out. Um, maybe, uh, what, what do you guys think? Um, I'm gonna go under the truck and show you guys, but uh, basically while you're looking at this, kind of be thinking, uh, I know it would be better if I replaced the cab mounts and then replaced all the rust and cut out all these spots in the doors and stuff and fixed it 
and did all that, but I don't want to get into that because I obviously have uh, other projects I need to be working on, mainly those two there, crew cab projects, and this is kind of just an in-between to uh, get some stuff done and out of the way and uh, free up some uh, some funds to finish those other projects. So if I go into that, that deep of stuff, I kind of... Uh, uh, running the problem of I'm going to snowball the thing and I'm trying to permit myself from doing it because I know I'm going to do it. If I if I put in a little bit of work, I'm going to like, well, I need to be doing this if I'm going to do that. You know, if I don't do this, I'm putting all that, that work I did was going to waste. So let me take you guys into the truck and show you guys what I'm working on. All right, now that we're under the truck, you can see right here is the main problem area. Uh, this is the worst side on the cab mounts and you can see here how it's... Uh, uh, broken apart down here at the bottom eventually this will start to sag and uh, your body lines won't line up as well and uh, you also have problems with your throttle uh, linkage uh, being a problem and always having to adjust that and anytime you flex the frame or anything like that it adjusts your throttle and it's kind of annoying um, so but right now it's still holding the truck up so I guess it has that going for it uh, the floor pans are really pretty nice when you look at them but uh, there is unfortunately some uh, flaky rust on the inside and right there it's starting to poke through a little bit And right there you can see the moisture from uh, when I washed the thing some water got inside and that's why it's uh, it looks like that Because uh, they're not sealed up all that great and water sits on the uh, floorboard So there is a little bit of uh, spots in the floorboard But it's kind of uh, if I were to drive it like it is now, I think it would be fine But if I do the cab mounts, then I'm going to want to do the floorboards so uh, that's kind of my uh, uh, where I'm at. The rest of the truck is really, really nice. I mean, here's the uh, cab mounts or the cab corners. Those are all really nice and rust free, so that's good. Uh, rockers are really good. Uh, really clean rockers on the thing. There is a little bit of uh, uh, rust showing up on the cab supports on both sides, I think. No, just, just the one side. This side's good. So uh, here's that other rocker, really nice, and uh, I think this floorboard's in better shape. Uh, and also the cab mount's in better shape, so uh, this side of the truck is a lot better shape. So, while I'm under here, here's the uh, transfer case. Cleaned up really nice, and here's that orange paint on that yoke I was talking about earlier. And a little bit of the orange paint on the uh, transfer case. So. So basically I got to make up my mind um, if I go to the trouble of pulling the cab and cutting out those cab mounts am I going to uh, snowball myself into floor pans and then if I do floor pans then I'm going to want to paint the floor because it's going to look goofy if I just have new floor pans and then the rusty floor. So then I'm going to strip it down more and then I want to fix more stuff like those cab supports where all of the stuff isn't that bad right now but in the future, if this thing gets used a lot, you know, they're, they're obviously going to get worse unless you uh, just kind of really take care of the thing and park it all the time. So it's kind of, uh, I'm really like 50-50 on the thing. I would really like to take care of the cab mounts because if I was going to drive it, I would want the cab mounts taken care of. But I really don't want to get that deep in the project. So you guys let me know down in the comments below. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to start on this until after I get this video released. So I kind of judge what you guys think. Because ultimately, I'm going to be selling this thing, so uh, kind of the I'm kind of up in the air, you know. Because I will get more for for it if I fix all the rust, but is that going to be uh, enough to uh, offset the time I spend on it? So I guess that's the big question. So for now, we're going to leave the truck until I make up my mind if we're going to pull the cab or not and fix that stuff. Uh, for now, let's go look at the engine options because I haven't made up my mind on that either. So we're going to go check out our engine options and see which one we decide on. All right, we're here in the storage shop where I got all the engines uh, stored. This right here is the engine I was thinking on using. It is a High Boy 360, if you can tell there by the oil pan. It's got a High Boy oil pan already. This is the original engine out of the Harbor Blue High Boy, the original High Boy truck. And it ran and drove uh, when I got it. It did sit for a long time, so there, there might be issues with the um, uh, uh, cylinder walls. They might have had some pitting on them or something, and that will affect the compression because it did sit, I can't remember, I don't think it was stuck, so that was, that's kind of good. But the, the guy I got it from, they got it running and, and drove it up on a trailer, and I had it running, but it was running very, very poorly. But I think it was kind of like blubbering around, it wouldn't hardly stay running. But it has a uh, Holly 
You can see it up there. It has a Holley two barrel on it. And um, I think if memory serves me correct, the, uh, the Holley's, the power valve can start leaking. Some guys can let me know down in the comments. I think the power valve can leak and it leaks fuel in there when it's running. So that's why it might've been really rich just from sitting in a, the uh, uh, rubber and stuff in the carburetor gaskets are get all old and crusty. But this engine does have a transmission installed still and the clutch and everything is working good. So my thought was just uh, try to put this engine and transmission in as a unit and not deal with clutch and all that kind of stuff and kind of save a few bucks there. But it is a little bit grimier than I remember. So um, once the other options I have, that's, that's my dad's, uh, it's a 360 high boy engine. I could probably talk him out of that. And that's uh, his 390, same, same deal. That one I know is stuck. Uh, we didn't get that one turned over. I got a 360 up there. That is uh, the original engine in the uh, out of my red, the my uh, ranch truck, the 69. So that's a 360. It had a dead hole in it though, so it's got issues. And then over here is uh, the engine that was in my 60, my white 67. Now, it's supposed to be a 352, but the uh, cylinder heads are like 360 cylinder heads. So I don't really know what it is. Uh, I didn't I didn't ever pull the pan to see if it's actually a 352 or if somebody just put a 360 in it at some point. Uh, that up there is a uh, 302. And then I have another 390 that is supposed to be a runner, but it is very grimy and greasy. So I'm kind of questionable on it. So uh, several options, not just an absolute perfect uh, option because this one is pretty greasy and grimy, but I think it's our best option. Uh, so I guess the, th the thing to do now would be to get this thing out of here and uh, clean it up and kind of see what we got. Uh, I would probably at a bare minimum want to uh, put freeze plugs in it, uh, clean it up, put, try to put exhaust manifold gaskets in it if I can get them off easy enough uh, and just kind of generally re-steal it and, you know, stuff like uh, water pump and all that kind of stuff, fuel pump, you know, just general and obviously motor mounts, general stuff like that. Uh, but then if I've got the engine out cleaned up, might as well paint it. And if I paint the engine, might as well paint the transmission. Uh, this is a problem I have. I can't just leave everything alone and uh, put it in as is. I gotta, I gotta do something to it. So uh, let's get this engine out. I think let's get it cleaned up and just kind of see what we got and uh, make up our minds from there, I guess. All right, well, uh, this thing is really packed in here. I'm gonna have to move a bunch of stuff to uh, get this engine out. So I thought it would be wise to go ahead and take a peek inside the cylinders before I spend all the time yanking this thing out and uh, pull all the spark plugs on this one side. And you can really tell that this thing was running really rich. So that kind of is good that you can tell that uh, I, my suspicions were correct, that the, the poor running conditions were because it was rich and not some other problem. See that one, see how you know carboned up or sooted up that is so that makes me feel good that uh, for sure this thing was running rich so it's probably a carburetor problem i got my bore scope in here it is a not very good bore scope so you're not gonna be able to see this very well but we're looking at the cylinder wall there's the piston and uh, i could find some some lines where the uh, rings had been setting over the years so it, it did have some sitting but it's not uh, it's not rust colored and pitted and up there at the top if i can show you right there you can see the uh the ledge where the piston would be where the piston would stop i don't know if you can see it or not oh you're not gonna be able to see it there is some vertical scoring but i was able to spot some cross hatching way up there up top it's probably going to be hard to see on camera but it's definitely not a new engine, obviously. I think it's actually an original engine, uh, mainly because it still has staples in the valve cover right here, which is something the factory did. So either uh, whoever take, uh, took this valve cover off put staples to hold the gaskets on like the assembly line did, or this valve cover has never even been off since this thing was going down the assembly line. So if that's true, you know, this engine could have quite a bit of use on it, but as clean as that, that piston was and the cylinder walls look pretty decent, I'm, uh, I'm confident enough I can yank this thing out of here and see what we got and put it in the truck and get it running and kind of see where we are from there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get this thing out of here and uh, get to cleaning, I guess. 
All right, well, I got the uh, engine pulled out of the shop and pretty much cleaned off uh, pretty decently. There's still a little bit of grease and grime still on this thing. Uh, that is to be expected. I kind of decided that if I use this engine transmission combo, I'm not going to paint it because then it would look too much like a uh, Craigslist rebuild, as uh, Vice Grip would say. So I decided just to leave it alone and uh, as is because that's kind of how I'm leaving the... Uh, uh, engine compartment of the truck so I think it would uh, match it better so I just left alone and I didn't get too uh, aggressive with the steam cleaner because it, it could get all of this stuff off like you see that right there but uh, you start doing that and it will start taking paint off actually you can see it does this machine surface here on the head it usually always takes that paint off just because it doesn't stick as well and you can see that that paint is gone and it's starting to uh, chip away there so you can see uh, areas like that where it's kind of uh, in like right here on this dipstick cover it kind of took the paint off there but um, overall you know the clean the engine cleaned up pretty decent uh, there is a lot more of the paint still present than uh, I originally expected because all of this was just all black and greasy um, over here is the those staples I was talking about earlier that uh, either you know, I guess that could be someone didn't replace the gasket when they took the valve cover off, but uh, typically when you do that, the gasket's junk. So uh, anytime I see those staples in those uh, valve cover gaskets, I always assume that the engine hasn't been taken apart. Uh, I'm probably going to yank the uh, valve covers off just so I can put new gaskets on it and check everything out, make sure it's not just totally gummed up with uh, a bunch of sludge or something of that nature. And uh, freeze plugs, because that one there, as you can tell, it's getting uh, pretty corroded up. And the other ones look pretty good. I think it's just the ones they couldn't get to. Somebody's been in here and replaced them. Because these look pretty good, but they're actually painted. I can't remember if Ford painted those or not. So someone might have been in here before doing something. But if Ford painted them, I guess those could be original. But this one right here, you can see that one is definitely needs, uh, needs replaced. So, um, yeah, so I guess we're at a decision point with that truck and the, uh, the cab mounts. Like I said, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And I know it's going to be easy for you guys just to say, oh, yeah, do the cab mounts, you know, because you're not doing the labor. So I want you guys to really think about, you know, if you're spending the time and the money to do that, would do you think that's worth it on this thing or just leave them alone? So instead of just thinking uh well duh yeah you need to replace them but you're not doing the labor you kind of got to think about that kind of stuff i'm i'm real bad about not mentioning that when i'm asking stuff because i'll ask a question and then i get overwhelming response one way well i didn't do a good enough job explaining you, know, you got to think it from my point of view not just yours so uh, let me know what you guys think i'm gonna hold off on yanking the cab on this thing the uh, the cab mounts should i replace them and uh, if I replace them, should I re work on the floor pans? And if I do that, should I work on the cab supports? And if I do that, should I paint the underside? And if I do that, should I paint the inner fenders? And if I do that, should I paint the engine? So just how far should, should I go? You know, if I, if I limit how far I go, uh, this thing gets done a lot quicker. And then we can start on some other projects that are uh, back there needing some attention as well. So let me know down in the comments down below, guys. I'm going to get going on this thing. Uh, in the meantime, what I can, and then I'll make up my mind, and we'll be checking back on this thing on another episode. So hit the subscribe button so you can see that. Give me a thumbs up if you like this truck and like this project. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.